गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल एम ऑडिबल एम ऑडिबल यस ओके थैंक यू सो Uh, we have finished our syllabus so from today's lecture i'll cover this revision part we are going to take so today we are going to see the quick review of the first chapter so our first chapter is the data communication fundamental in this chapter we have seen all these things and we are going to repeat all these things uh, first was the concept and the terminology where we have seen uh some of the basic definitions then uh, analog and digital data transmission then transmission impairments channel capacity then transmission media digital to digital signal encoding techniques we have seen and synchronous and asynchronous transmission okay so let's start so before starting anything what is mean by the data communication so it is nothing but the exchange of the data between the source and the receiver okay and for exchanging of this information or for transferring of this information some medium is required uh, so for example wire cable or in case of the wireless communication it will be a air so with the help of some transmission medium when data is being transferred from source to the receiver or source to the destination then such type of communication is called as an data communication okay so this is the way how data is being transferred from source to the destination okay these are some of the steps while our uh, data is being transferred okay so this is the input data so maybe in the format of 1010 we are giving it then transmit transfers this signal uh, data in a signal so signals can be analog or the digital signal by using some transmission medium this uh, data is being sent to the or it is converted into the received signal and finally receiver will get an output data so these are the steps through which your data is transferred from source to the destination okay so this is the simple communication mod model through which data is transferred so source then what is mean by the source so source is nothing but the one who is sending the device uh, sending the data so it can be a device or a user who is using the uh, particular medium so that can be anything so that is the source who is sending the data transmitter is nothing but the data which is generated by the source these are not transmitted directly in the form which they were generated for example i am sending the data as a hello right so that is not being transmitted as it is as like a h e l l o no so that should be transferred if it is a medium of a computer so it should be transferred in a 10 format so transmission of the data sent by the sender or the source in a proper format this task is done by the this transmitter okay so that is the second element then next is the transmission system so we can say it can be a medium any type of medium for example wires so these are the different types of the wires or the air or water anything through which your information is being transmitted so that is nothing but the transmission system then receiver who accepts the signal or who receives the data from the source so that is nothing but the receiver and destination is to which we are sending the data and final data will be received to the destination so these are the some of the elements of this particular communication model this model is called as a communication model transmitter source transmitter then transmission medium receiver and the destination these are the elements of your communication model okay then types of the computer network so first what is mean by the network or what is mean by the computer network so whenever number of computers are linked together means whenever number of computers are joined together to exchange some of information in between them so this is called as a computer network 
ज्यावेळेस खूप सारे कम्प्युटर्स एकमेकांशी लिंक असतात कशासाठी डेटा एक्सचेंज करायसाठी एखादी फाईल असेल रिसोर्स असेल एनिथिंग सो सच टाईप ऑफ नेटवर्क इज कॉल्ड एज एन कम्प्युटर नेटवर्क दीज आर द टाईप्स ऑफ द कम्प्युटर नेटवर्क लॅन मॅन वॅन अँड द पॅन ओके सो लॅन इज नथिंग बट द लोकल एरिया नेटवर्क विच इज मोस्टली युज टू कवर अ स्मॉल एरिया देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज एन लॅन ओके वेन द एरिया इज फॉर एक्झाम्पल अ पर्टिक्युलर बिल्डिंग और पर्टिक्युलर ऑफिस देन लॅन इज युज देन मॅन इज मेट्रोपोलिट पोलिटेन एरिया नेटवर्क सो इट कवर्स और इट इज अ लार्जर नेटवर्क दॅन द लॅन इट कवर्स द लार्जर एरिया ऍज कम्पेअर टू द लॅन सो यू कॅन सी हिअर सो नंबर ऑफ लॅन्स आर ग्रुप टुगेदर देन वी कॅन कॉल इट ॲज अ मॅन देन last one is the van that is nothing but the wide area network so number of lands are uh, sorry number of fans are connected with each other then it forms a and so it covers a larger area so that is called as a van these are the types of the computer network one more type is there which is called as an pan so pan is nothing but the personal area network whenever we connect our own devices with each other for example laptop mobile a printer so this type of network is called as a personal area network okay so these are the types of the network then next is the data transmission it is the data transmission is a means of transmitting digital or analog data over a communication medium to one or more devices this transmission of data by using some medium is nothing but the data transmission this data transmission can be of these two types it is carried out by using these two types first one is the point to point communication and second one is the multi point communication okay what is the point to point communication it is nothing but the channel is shared exactly between the two devices okay means when the communication is happen or communication will happen between exactly these two devices sending and the receiving then it is called as a point to point communication because only one sender is there and only one receiver is there so this is an point to point communication and in case of the multi point communication it means that channel is shared among the multiple devices or the nodes is what so there are number of nodes are available or number of devices are available and one channel is used to to communicate or to send and receive the data so one wire is used to, to connect the number of devices then it is called as a multi point communication okay so in this case so in this case it can it may be possible that this is the sender and this is the receiver or in second case maybe this is the sender and this is the receiver so this is the multi point communication okay now in uh, point to point communication the whole resource or whole power of this particular medium is dedicated only to these two nodes okay whatever strength of them is maximum uh, data carry karayachi capacity ji asel ya wire chi so all that capacity is given only for these two nodes okay and in case of the multi point communication obviously as it is having number of nodes that capacity is divided into the number of nodes okay so this is the multi point communication and the point to point communication okay whenever you are having any doubt if you want to ask then you can ask me in between okay otherwise i will cover the part so if you have doubt as well then madhe vichara okay uh, repeat or explain it more anything because most of the part we have covered uh, i think two times already we have covered still we are taking the revision so if anybody is having any doubt still you can ask me in between okay this is the example of the point to point communication and multi point so you can see here this the, this is the point to point where these only these two nodes are com- linked or these uh, are connected by using only one link and in case of the multi point there are number of nodes are available and they are 
connected by using only one link okay so obviously in this type of communication the whole bandwidth will be given to these two nodes only and in this type of communication the bandwidth will be divided into all these nodes then next a uh, signal so as we have seen in the communication model is that this no data is directly sent as it is so suppose i'm sending the hi message so that will not be sent as it is so it is converted for example in a 10 format and for this the signal is being generated so signal it is an electrical current that is used for carrying data from one device or network to the other device or to other network okay so mo mostly these signals are of these two types analog signal and the digital signal so the main difference between these two is that just the way of representation otherwise both are representing the data only okay analog signal is also used to, to represent the data digital signal is also used to, to represent the data but the way of representation is different so analog signals are mostly represented like this and these are dependent upon these three terms okay amplitude frequency and the phase so these are the three terms by considering which the analog signals are generated and these analog signals are continuously waves or these are the continuous waves so maybe representation will be like this this is one or uh, this is zero anything so only difference is what this analog signal is depending upon these three terms that is amplitude frequency and the phase and the digital signals are nothing but <coughs> these are not continuous okay or these are the discrete one okay analog signals are continuous but digital signals are discrete so these are represented like this for example this is one or this is zero again one and zero anything okay so this is the digital signal we can convert digital signal into analog or reverse also then next is the transmission medium okay transmission medium transmission medium is through which data is being sent okay this transmission medium is classified as guided or unguided guided medium means what with guided medium the waves are guided along the physical path and it is called as a bounded media okay means the path is decided okay for example this is my sender and this is my receiver and data is needs to be sent from a to b okay so in case of the guided medium suppose the path is like this that this should travel through c like this if it is decided then data must be sent by using the same path only that a to c and c to b it should not get change so that is nothing but the guided medium so whenever we are using the wires to connect any two devices in that case this type of communication is called as a guided medium communication and in case of the unguided medium so if suppose same uh, a and b is there so this path is not decided okay so this path is not decided data can be sent through c or it can be sent through d or directly anything so it depends upon the transmission medium okay which is also called as a wireless Okay. so in case of the unguided medium it provides means for transmitting electromagnetic waves but do not guide them hmm? so for example propagation through air vacuum and the sea water okay means there is no specific path to travel the data then it is called as an unguided medium okay these are the some of the wires that we have uh, seen that first is the twisted pair cable so it is called as a twisted pair because the cables uh, or the wires are twisted with each other okay and there are mostly four pairs are made for eight wires okay now 
where it is used so in telephone lines in dsl lines or in the lens so these are the twisted pairs so twisted pairs why these wires are twisted with each other so the reason is what to provide the more security or we can say to have a noiseless communication okay security means also noiseless communication means external कोणत्याही गोष्टीचा अफेक्ट त्या वायर वरती होऊ नये सो दॅट्स वाय दीज वायर्स आर ट्विस्टेड विथ इच अदर द मोर ट्विस्ट यू विल गिव्ह सो मोर नॉइजलेस डेटा विल बी सेंड ओके सो दॅट इज नथिंग बट द ट्विस्टेड पेअर केबल दॅट देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ दिस ट्विस्टेड पेअर शिल्डेड अँड अनशिल्डेड ट्विस्टेड पेअर ओके शिल्ड मीन्स जस्ट एक्स्ट्रा कोटिंग इज ऍडेड लाईक दिस दिस वन ओके on the wire and unshielded means directly uh, means there is no shield extra co cover is added on the cable okay so these are the uh, shielded and the un uh, shielded twisted pair and the unshielded twisted pair the second type of cable is the coaxial cable so it is looks like this coaxial cable it is mostly used to in the uh, tv networks or the traditional ethernet lans and the man so these are the applications of the coaxial cable okay these are all the covers or the coatings which are added to the cable and the last one is the last one is the optical fiber cable so this is very thin cable and it is mostly used uh, in a mostly used in a medical purpose for the medical or uh, what we can say that birds so in that case that is used so these are the three types of the cables already we have seen this if you have any doubt you can ask me hmm? first one is the twisted pair then second one is the fiber optic cable and uh, next is the coaxial cable three cables okay then next transmission modes okay transmission modes means transmission of the data between two devices okay it is known uh, as a communication mode means how data is being transmitted from source to the destination so these are the three transmission modes that is simplex half duplex and the full duplex transmission mode okay uh, we can say that how or what is the exact way or work of source and the destination that is decided in a transmission modes okay for example simplex transmission let's say so in case of the simplex transmission there is a restriction that the data should be sent in only one direction it means that if this machine is acting as a sender so it should be a receiver and the role is fixed so sender should send a data and receiver should only accepts the data so such type of communication is called as a simplex transmission can anybody tell the example of this we have discussed this example yes any example real time example we have seen can anybody tell what is the example of simplex transmission yes yes what is the example of simplex transmission for example have we have seen this monitor and keyboard okay yeah it is also good example any other example so more through monitor we are giving the input and on keyboard we can see that good any other example
yes any other example television broadcasting okay good as a radio broadcasting okay good one any other okay good at least some of the examples you remember good sakshi and pratibha has given the answers good so these are the examples of the simplex transmission okay then next is the half duplex transmission where the role of the sender and the receiver can get changed okay so what is the meaning of it so in case of this say this a machine a is sending the data and b is receiving the data right so in other way a can receive the data and b can send the data okay so a and b both can send as well as receive the data but one at a time so that is nothing but the half duplex transmission okay what is the example of this half duplex transmission half duplex transmission walkie talkie yes walkie talkie good as well so walkie talkie is the best example that uh, of this uh, half duplex transmission okay so whenever we want to talk we have to just put the button on we can talk and afterwards the other party if they want to talk they have to also press the button and they will talk so both can uh, talk with each other but at a time one person should talk so that is nothing but the half duplex transmission okay good one then next uh, uh, who has given pallavi has given the answer good then next one is the full duplex transmission so both direct uh, both way communication is allowed in case of the full duplex transmission okay so that is nothing but the full duplex so any example of full duplex telephone yes telephone or our yeah telephone have given the example ajun vaibhavi and uh, vaibhavi patil has given the example vishal also given the example ajun any other examples hmm any other example Yes. Any other example? Video conferencing is also an example, na? Right? Hmm. So number of people can talk in case of the video conferencing. So both way communication is possible. So that is not. That are the examples of the full duplex transmission. okay so these are the three modes of the transmission remember these are huh? three modes of the transmission simplex sub duplex and the full duplex simplex one way communication half duplex both way communication is possible but one at a time and full duplex both way communication is allowed at a time so that these are the uh, transmission modes the next comes is the transmission impairments impairments is nothing but Uh, obstacles we can say or the reasons due to which the transmission is not happening properly so that are called as an transmission impairments so these are the broad or uh, distribution of these transmission impairments so transmission causes first is the attenuation then distortion and the noise due to which your original data is not reached as it is to the receiver that is called as an impairment okay how this difference can be uh, recognized that whether the data is reached as it is or not so the way is nothing but the signal okay because this is the way how we can come to know that yes the data has reached properly as it is or not because suppose my sending signal is like this 
and receiver side i am getting the signal like this so obviously my data is impaired or it is getting hampered so this is the way how we can recognize the data is reached without any uh, impairment in between or not so these are the three causes of the impairments attenuation distortion and the noise so let's see what is mean by the attenuation it is nothing but the loss of energy okay if the distance is too long or if the wire is having the uh, carrying capacity low but the data is too high in such cases this attenuation is happening okay so this is the way how the attenuation can be recognized so this is your original signal and if it is getting changed then it will look like this this is simple one example so at the receiver side if the signal is changed it means that the original data is not reached properly so to overcome this problem of the attenuation amplifiers are used okay or to compensate for this loss or the loss of energy amplifiers are used which works like a booster for this particular signal okay by using the amplifier we can get a signal up to some extent which is which will match to the original original signal okay but not 100% okay amplifiers ma kay hoil tar jo attenuated signal zalela hai kiwa jo disturb zalela hai data to kay honar to recover hoil but it will not be a 100% recovery so that is nothing but the amplifiers okay that is the work of the amplifiers okay how this attenuation is measured so this is the uh, formula db is equal to or it is measured in the decibel db is equal to 10 log to the base 10 or uh, p2 by p1 p2 is output signal and p1 is the input signal this is the example we have seen the uh, sorry this is the formula we have seen examples of this also then next is the distortion it means that the signal changes its form or the shape then it is called as a distortion distortion can occur in a composite signal made up of different frequency so this is the example of the uh, distortion how this uh, original signal is changed like this so a sing a uh, sim um, single change in your original signal can disturb your data so this is called as a distortion and last one is the noise so noise is an unwanted signal which interfere with the original message signal and corrupts the parameters of the message signal so no, whenever there is a mm, or noise is there in a signal so it looks like this okay is there is no continuous representation of the data see if i am representing any data which is like 1 zero or which is my original data so obviously it will have a some form in my signal like this means continuous manner madhe kay tar maza representation ase but whenever it is getting affected so obviously there is no pattern for this signal is we cannot get anything from this signal and such signals are called as a noisy signals okay these are the types of the noise thermal noise industrial industrial noise cross talk and impulse these are the types thermal noise means random noise of the electrons in the wire creates an extra signal okay due to the electrons miss khub sari heat jali wire then that type of noise is called as an thermal noise induced for motors and application or devices act as a transmitter antenna and medium as receiving antenna so in uh, these devices this induced noise is happening cross talk noise is when one wire affects the other wire cross connection type so that is cross talk noise and impulse noise is the signal with the high energy that comes from lighting or the power line so whenever signal is like this sudden change of speak the signal made represent hota na and then suppose the signal is again continuously like this so such noise is called as an impulse noise then snr snr is nothing but the signal to noise ratio it is measured 
by using the uh, SNR. Okay, and next is the capacity of the channel. It means that uh, capacity of the transmission medium is what is the maximum capacity of wire to uh, take the data or to travel the data. Ika the wire chi, kiwa medium chi, kiwa channel chi. Maximum data carry carriage capacity kiti. So that is nothing but the capacity of the channel. Okay. And this capacity is measured depending upon the bandwidth, then signal levels, then channel quality. Okay. So these are the some of the factors. Bandwidth means what? It describes the maximum data transfer rate of a network or the internet connection is what is the maximum data rate of transmission that is called as a bandwidth and signal levels means it is nothing but which level is used to send the data okay this is explained very well at the time of lecture i hope you have understood this what is this signal level is one what if signal level is two and so on okay if the signal level is one means what either one or zero is sent at a time if the signal level is two it means that the data will be one one or zero zero one zero zero one like this means two that is two raised to two so this way this much data will be sent if the signal level is three it means that one 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 zero 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 one zero zero likewise the combination will be there Okay, so if we increase these levels of the signal, so it means that there is a high chances of a data loss. The reason is that suppose this is my medium, wire okay, through which my data is being transmitted. Now suppose uh, level is one, so data will be my like first one will go, then suppose zero, then again one. Likewise, data will be same in this case there is a space in the wire or uh, to travel the data smoothly suppose i increase the level and it is now two so what will be the data one one then for example zero one then one zero likewise so obviously the space between the data or the wire will be reduced and the data will come closer Up, again suppose i made it as a three so triple one then again triple zero one or likewise whatever be there so as i'm going on or goes on increasing the levels of this particular uh, data so there is a chances of a collision between the data because a simple wire mode is a space comes along hoops are data as a travel ho trailer so obviously the collision will occur so it is better that signal level is minimum Okay. Then next channel, uh, sorry, Nyquist and the Shannon. These are the two theorems which are used to know the channel capacity or to understand the channel uh, maximum uh, carrying capacity of a particular channel. So first is the Nyquist capacity formula. So what it says, if the levels of the signal increases, then the probability of error occurring also increases. Why? The reason already I have explained over here. That is the reason, okay, why it will increase. What is the reason? Hmm? Uh, one second.
okay so nyquist capacity formula so this is the um, formula that if we increase the levels of the signal then there is a probability that the error or the collision between the data will get uh, or it will happen so this is the reason if we increase the levels so so obviously data will collide with each other so this is the formula to know the capacity of the channel what will be the maximum capacity of the channel so c is equals to 2 b b stands for bandwidth then log to the base 2 and 2 raised to n n is nothing but the levels of the signal so what if the level of signal is 2 then what will be the capacity if the level of signal is 3 then what will be the capacity so that we can calculate by using this particular formula this is called as a nyquist capacity formula remember this this will be asked for the mcq question okay the formula is 2 b log to the base 2 capacity formula this is the second capacity formula but mostly it is more, uh, generated to know the capacity of the channel in the presence of the noise so nyquist is mostly used of for the noiseless channel forgot to mention over here so it is mostly used for the noiseless channel and this is is this uh, shannon capacity formula it is used uh, to measure the capacity of channel in presence of the noise this is the formula c is equals to b okay and these are the example okay so this is uh, not required huh. now up to this any doubt anybody is having any doubt it is mostly used for the noiseless channel it is considered that there is no noise and if the noise is not there then what will be the maximum capacity of a channel okay then next is the shannon capacity it is nothing but the to measure uh, the capacity of a channel in presence of a noise so this is the formula c is equal to b log to the base 2 1 plus smr ठीक है एनी डाउट अप टू दिस ओके नो डाउट ओके एबीसी फॉर्म या ओम एक्चुअली दैट साइट इज नॉट ओपन येट मींस आई हैव ट्राइड इट आई डोंट नो व्हाई इट इज नॉट गेटिंग ओपन इफ इट इज ओपन देन आई विल लेट यू नो I'm trying it now also. I'm getting the message that this size can't be reached. I don't know why. Don't worry, I'll get it to know. The एक दम अलग समझ लेते साइट ओपन जा लेते तो मैं तो माला इन बिटवीन पर कदी ही बोलूँ सामोश अब तक. Okay, that will not be an issue. Okay, next one is the data encoding and the decoding. okay data encoding and the decoding encoding and decoding these are the two techniques so encoding means processing uh, it is the process of converting the data or a given sequence or the of the character symbols or the alphabets or any type of data into specified format for the secure transmission so if the data is given then conversion of this data in a specific format is called as an encoding okay and decoding is nothing but it is the reverse process of encoding which is the extraction of a information from a converted format so if my data is represented like this so representation in this format is an encoding and retrieving the data from this format is called as an decoding okay there are two uh, types or certain types of the encoding types and the techniques these are the two different parts okay polar encoding means which is also called as the unipolar or on off king or simply ok it is the presence of the pulse 
uh, or in case of the polar encoding the presence of the pulse represents one and absence of the pulse represents zero means pulse in the sense signal okay means if the signal is present like this okay it represents one and if the signal is absence that is nothing but this one then it represents zero it is called as an polar encoding okay then digital to digital encoding so representation of the digital data in a by using digital signal is called as a digital to digital signal or digital encoding and for this some techniques are used that we are going to see okay there are some techniques for this representation first is nrz and manchester differential manchester nrz l i u number of techniques are there these are the different techniques these are nothing but the different ways of representation of your data to secure it okay uh, so today we'll stop here in next lecture we'll see the next part up to this anybody is having any problem no problem okay we'll stop here huh? wait a minute i'll take a presentation